a live source to talk about serious, very serious issues. But we're going through a lot currently in Jamaica, all of us, that warrants a serious conversation. And if we're honest with ourselves, the abuse that women are being faced with now in our country is not something new. This has been happening for some time. The statistics say that one in every four women have experienced intimate partner violence of, or abuse of some form, whether it's sexual or physical, in our country. And I think we're all tired of tweeting, we're all tired of posting, we're all tired of suffocating from the daily experiences that we read about, that we see, that we feel. Because as women, whether or not it has happened directly to us, there is a very, very personal fear that all of us experience when we hear that a woman has been raped, has been murdered, has been taken, especially in such a heinous way, especially when you know that she knows this person. And worst, when you hear of the kind of sexual violence that our children are going through. As I said, it's not new. I can give you countless examples of experiences that we've seen, whether in government or outside. But this is a collective responsibility. And I know that many persons because of the national frustration, don't necessarily understand how to have the kind of collective discussion that we should all be having. But we're facing a situation in this country where it has almost become normal for women to be abused. My own experiences, I can remember as a child being bullied by when I was 10 by a boy and because they didn't like what, what I perhaps had to say and pushed me. Well, me just double my fist and thump him. And I went home and I said to my mother, I want to start karate because I knew that in that moment I never wanted to experience anybody pushing me again physically. Over time as a teenager, I've had to use that kind of self-defense in, in Jamaica because of people who felt that they could just grab me, grope me, hold me. Um, and it's unnerving, but when you have, I had that kind of training but there are lots of women who don't. There's lots of women who don't have the necessaries to leave abusive situations, are so fearful that when their adrenaline comes, that it's difficult to remain calm in a situation. And that kind of, imagine growing up in communities where that is all you've seen, where that is all you've experienced. And somehow you feel that there is, there is no one there to scream on your behalf. No one there when somebody bucking you. Like last year when we saw the man grab up the woman in our chest and buck her in our forehead. I believe it was in West Milan. And when the police went and said, look, let's take you away, it was difficult for her to even leave because the conditioning of the, of the mind and perhaps even just the, the, the fear of what could happen if she did, she said no, she, would, she don't want to leave and she didn't really want to press charges because it is a mental, emotional and psychosocial issue that many of our women are facing. The kind of sexual
sexual harassment that some of us still face has, has followed me into adulthood, even as an MP. And so I have, it wasn't only at 10 years old I've had to defend myself. I've had to defend myself in my 20s, in my 30s, now in my 40s. I remember the first time I went in to walk in a, in, in a constituency, a man held on to my breast, just walked up to me and held on to my breast and said, boy, you know, so I never feel I'm a swirl breast yet. And I had to defend myself. Similarly, and normally I don't speak about these things, but I feel it, it's time because these things don't just happen to certain people in Jamaica. And people sometimes think that, boy, you know, some of us have the security and the means to fend these things up, but it doesn't prevent the mindset from taking advantage of the situation. There are moments when I couldn't walk into a crowd in Jamaica. There was one time when I was walking into a crowd. By the time I got to the political platform, my blouse was wide open. Why? Because everybody felt, or some people felt, not everybody, that as I walked, they could grab, they could feel, they could, at every part of me. And I just decided, look, as much as I would like to walk through the crowd, it's better for me to just enter from the back, to preserve my own space and security. Now imagine if they can do that in situations to many of us. Imagine a young woman who has no means of protection in a community where what she has to depend on is her own wits. And sometimes when you're seeing this happening, rather than pick up the phone and film it may be more important to scream on her behalf and say, yo, don't to boy, I'm going to call the police. And all of us have to get together to rally around protecting each other. This is not an uptown, downtown, round town, rural town situation. This is a national issue that we're facing in Jamaica. And for us to collectively strengthen each other, it will require support. It will require a collective will. It will require all of us saying enough is enough, but not only in our intrinsic spaces. This requires a female revolution that we've never seen before, where the confidence that comes from your gut to get stronger, to have no fear, is not something that comes overnight if you've been conditioned all your life to be afraid. So, there are a couple of things that we need done immediately. To me, presenting a motion to Parliament. Let us say I go tomorrow to present a motion to call on the government to make the sexual registry public. I don't know when that motion is going to be debated. But perhaps the government looking at all the things that the, us women are talking about, can say, it's time we make the sexual registry public. Why? Because a mother needs to know if a pedophile is living beside her and the name of that person, or if there's a child, or if there's a rapist, no matter where they are. And so perhaps it is time to make that public. The other thing is, Somebody doesn't grow up and say, let me strangle someone, kill them, leave them at home, and then go to work. And there is a dissonance, almost as if nothing has happened. Those kinds of behavior patterns can be identified from children. But why are we missing those signs? Why is it that somehow we are missing those signs? And there has to be a complete overhaul of the way we teach our children in schools and how we pick up the, psych the psychopaths, the sociopaths, the masochists, those behavioral issues that will lead to persons growing up who may perhaps become the rapist in the community and address them and change that pattern of behavior. How is it then that 
we can start looking at the, the minds of persons who have been incarcerated for this kind of situation and address it from there. So the, the, I'm watching the comments as, as I see it. And we have to be honest with ourselves. This, we stood up with our eyes wide shut as these things were continuously happening. Now that information is so prevailing and that people have the systems to be able to record information and present information, that is not enough to sound a red flag. And so ladies, I want to say something else to you. Reducing fear and reconditioning who we are is not an overnight exercise. It requires careful, strategic, and methodical discipline. We have to get physically fit. You have to understand that if you're walking, walk in a group, you also have to understand that as women, if we are on our phones, as we're walking or as we're standing up, keep your, be alert. Don't hold your head down. And there's, there's another thing. We have to look out for one another. So when you see someone being beaten, and I've, I think we've all seen the videos at various stages over the last year or two, with women just being bludgeoned whether by a fist, a brick, a machete, a forehead, what will we do? Will we take up our phones and film it? Or will we call the police first? The other thing that you need to do is believe your children. You'd be surprised at the amount of children that I met when I was Minister of Youth who were in places of safety and children's homes, who said their mothers just did not believe them when they would tell them that they were being molested by her boyfriend. These things pain me. And you know, normally, I think in discussing issues, we have to get to the data. The fact that we're meeting at a time when Jamaica has the largest female murder femicide in the world is really an indictment. The fact that, as I said, one in every four women in Jamaica have experienced intimate partner violence or abuse of some form is an indictment. The fact that we still cannot have an open sexual registry. So what are we going to do? How are we going to move forward? This requires media, academia, both sides of the house, both sides of the house in Parliament. The police, civic organizations, the PSOJ, to really start rallying around so that women know that they're not alone. Women know that if them ball out for help, the police have a duty to take it all the way to the end. That women know that there are those of us, if you call on us, we know. That women know that if they stand up in the center of a community with a man battering them, that perhaps 15 other women will come out of their homes and start balling out for help because it will take numbers. Numbers are what changes a situation and willpower. And so we're all frustrated, but frustration doesn't change or move a needle. Action and strategy does. And it's time that we start being strategic as women. It is time that we stop allowing these things to happen every day and change our own personal actions so that there can be a collective reaction on how this is dealt with. And so 
that is that is how I, I we all of us feel about it. I know that's how we all feel about it. It's palpable now. The emotions are high. You can feel it up here. People want people want solutions, and we want it today. So let's make the sexual registry public. In other jurisdictions, it is. Let us set up the committees to look at introducing cognitive behavioral therapy in or from our basic schools to sixth form. Let us look at how we can investigate the minds of persons who have been incarcerated for these crimes so that we can get underneath rather than treating the symptoms we treat the cause of the issues so that in another five years because this is not going to solve itself overnight and so let's not fool ourselves in the meantime we need to we need to arm ourselves and when i say arm ourselves with the data the information and the the the, the, the strength of mind to know how to protect ourselves as we go out there to face this enemy of abuse that is being perpetrated daily, hourly, minutely on all of us, every single one of us, me, you, your, your, your mother, because whether or not it happens, just the fear and the perception that it could happen leads to people feeling that they can't do anything. So I want to thank you for listening. And for my part, I certainly, tomorrow, when I get to Parliament, I am going to ask the Minister of Justice what it is going to take for us to make that registry public. To ask the Minister of Gender, how is it that we can get her budgets to be realigned so that it is not only 25 million that is being used for gender sensitization, but how can she realign her budget to make this an issue? And to ask the Minister of National Security, rather than have these huge debates about what we're doing and what we're not doing, let us collectively get together, find those low-hanging fruits that we can do immediately to give women some peace of mind.